Hey guys, this is Elise. I'm a therapist and wellness coach. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. Today's topic will be taking the first steps on your financial wellness and gearing this conversation primarily for healthcare workers, though it can be used by the general public as well. My guest feature for this interview is Kevin Clark, who is a certified financial planner in Central Ohio and has been tireless in helping both his clients and the general public to learn what we can do to self-care financially. We realize that there are many nuances to this conversation of finances during these times of pandemic, and the principles discussed in this video may not perfectly fit to your particular situation. Please take what is most beneficial, adapt the advice to your life where things are applicable, discard what is not relevant to you, and seek a financial advisor's advice for um, more specific pieces to your life. This conversation, again, is generically designed for easiest adaptability for most frontline and healthcare workers in these times. Okay, so let's get started. Thank you so much, Kevin, for your time and for joining me here. Um, my first yeah, question- Glad to be here. So glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first question for today is, so you practice financial planning which some people may not realize is a very specific type of work in the financial field. Just to start, could you tell us a little about what exactly financial planning is, why it's important for healthcare professionals and other workers in general to do it? Absolutely. Yeah, I really appreciate being on here and having the opportunity to talk. Uh, as you mentioned, financial planning is actually a, a very specific type of work. It is a very deliberate process. And at its core, it really focuses on what we can and can't control in relation to our money. So one of the positives, I think, out of the last three to four months for a lot of people that this pandemic has brought us is it's helped us recognize what we can control versus what's outside of our control. And more importantly, encouraged us to focus our time and energy on those things that we can control. Financial planning really does that, but specifically in relation to your money as well as anything else that could indirectly impact your finances. So in this environment where we're making that distinction in regards to our health, our social, our family lives on what we can and can't control, I think there's never been a better time than ever to do that in relation to finances as well. Uh, at a high level, the, the process of financial planning really has three components you start by defining in really specific and quantifiable terms what your goals are in life, uh, what your purpose is for getting out of bed in the morning and going to work. Second step is taking an assessment of where you are now and in relation to those goals and priorities you've set, are you on track or not? And then the third piece, which is where a professional financial planner can really come in and help a lot is if you're not on track, what are the things that need to happen to get you on track? And more importantly, how do you break that down into smaller or more manageable steps so that it's easier to make those incremental changes? We see in a lot of diet and exercise programs right now as, as creatures of habit that uh, if we're not in a position where we want, uh, whether we're overweight or not eating or doing the right things, we're always looking for those quick fixes. So we try to, in a lot of cases, do too much all at once. And that can be really overwhelming and in a lot of cases counterproductive. So much like uh, the most successful diets try to break it down into gradual improvement, financial planning does that for your finances and the financial planner essentially acts as your coach throughout that process. That sounds really great. And um, it makes a lot of sense that taking some logical, neutral steps to help oneself financially is going to set each person up, um, no matter where they're coming from and where their financial situation is, to succeed and to be in a better place um, overall. So um, I think with that intro, it, it gives us a really great foundation to then get into um, the next pieces of today's conversation and today's realities. You know, reports are showing that 20% of individuals with COVID infections, at least according to some reports, in, <laughs> given that there's so many reports out there now, um, some reports show that 
20% of individuals with COVID infections in Ohio are healthcare workers. So uh, being aware of the disease's risks to our health and its deadly potentials, um, and with this conversation that you just shared of knowing that there's things that we can do to reduce our chances um, of suffering financially, emotionally, mentally related to our finances. Um, and um, of course, the medical experts can talk about what we can do to reduce our chances of contracting it. But from the financial perspective, what are a couple of practical things that people on the front lines can do right now to protect themselves and their families from wherever they might be starting from? Sure, yeah. Um, there's two things in particular I'd say are really important uh, right now. Uh, both of these can be kind of uncomfortable to think about or do, but I would say uh, they're absolutely necessary right now, in my opinion. So first of all, and this one is especially not fun to think about, uh, the most common gap I see in financial planning overall that's especially important to our frontline workers is estate planning. Uh, a lot of people I've seen that are in otherwise great shape financially and doing all the right things have this gap of they either don't have an estate plan in place or they have outdated documents that don't reflect their current situation and wishes. Everyone, but especially those at increased risk of either um, suffering significant health complications or in contracting the virus right now should be reviewing this uh, if they haven't already because it functions as your contingency plan. It's protection against life's biggest uncertainties and addressing it up front, however difficult or unfun it may be, um, it can really provide you with a lot of peace of mind and it also protects uh, and affects the well being of your loved ones as well that might have to be pulled in if something happens. So, at a minimum, with that estate plan, uh, you should have a will in place, powers of attorney, and in particular, uh, financial and a healthcare power of attorney, uh, appointing someone to help make your decisions if you can't, and a healthcare directive, which I'm sure a lot of our healthcare workers watching this might know what that accomplishes as well. Each of those serves a different function, but all three of them are essential things that you should always have in place. And depending on how complex your life or wishes may be, some other things may be necessary, but those three in particular are the foundation for a good estate plan. Second thing, Money is a very emotional and private thing in our lives. It affects a lot of different aspects of how we live. In situations of extreme stress like now, our instinct is to not want to talk about it, to kind of bottle it up, uh, put it in the back of our mind, ignore it, and not think about it. Uh, that's something that I really encourage people to resist that and just uh, be willing to have that conversation right now. Um, it can really just, if nothing else, act as a release, um, prevent you from building up anxiety and stress. Uh, if you feel you have concerns with your money, the worst thing you can do is try to ignore it. That is something that can become a very uh, permanent and toxic problem if you allow it to go on. It can wear on your mental health. It can damage your relationship with family and loved ones and couples especially. Just be open and honest with each other, work together. Uh, it's going to help your relationship. It's going to increase the chances of you getting out of whatever issue you might have. And it's giving you that outlet of the person you can communicate with. For people that don't have that in the form of a spouse um, or a loved one or a partner, um, seek out somebody else who can do that for you. and. If nothing else, that might be a great place to pull in a financial professional to do that for you because they can, if nothing else, just act as a sounding board for you and provide that encouragement. Sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about, because um, those are some really good practical things, working on the will, opening the conversation about finances. And like you said, it can be really uncomfortable for people to talk about finances or having to pivot their original financial plans within their families, within their marriages, and make, um, make changes with the goals that they had in mind, which are tied to dreams, core values, 
And I'd love to hear a little bit more from your perspective as a financial planner. Um, a little, why should they be thinking about their finances um, for conversation, for, for shifting, for pivoting? And, um, and, and how have you seen this sort of play out when you're helping people? Right. So uh, we kind of connected over this idea that uh, right now a lot of people are focused on preserving their physical health and their mental health. Financial health, in my opinion, is just as important. It's directly intertwined and tied to those two things. And it can either reinforce or detract from you remaining healthy, both mentally and physically. So making gradual improvements in your financial standing has a dramatic effect positively on your emotional well-being. You're in a good place mentally. You're generally happy and positive. That tends to have a correlation with your physical health as well, because uh, people that are happier generally, in a lot of studies, have been proven to get sick less, to have less life-threatening disease, or if nothing else, more of a positive attitude that lends itself to fighting disease better. That process can work in reverse. If you're not in a good financial place and you're not taking steps to address problems, it can build up that anxiety and stress so that hurts your emotional and mental well-being, and that could put you in a more vulnerable position for a physical ailment as well. So it can, in the worst cases, create a vicious cycle because to seek out care from uh, a health professional, uh, especially if you've been furloughed or lost your job in situations like now mm -hmm. where your health care coverage is tied to that job, mm -hmm. bills can add up and it can just compound the issues that you're concerned about financially. So while we're focused on those other two things, mental and physical health and taking steps to reinforce or protect those, it's equally important to address the financial aspect because it has a direct and really impactful place in that overall complex. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for going into a bit more detail for that in connecting the dots for someone who might be listening to this conversation. Um, so for someone who wants to get started on their own financial planning, it can be difficult or intimidating to make changes to their financial habits, especially in a time of duress and great change like we're in right now. Um, because we're creatures of habit, we find security in what is consistent and predictable to make huge shifts when our world is shifting can be kind of scary and challenging. Um, what would you say to someone in the healthcare field or otherwise who may not have saved quite enough or is struggling with the idea of starting to save in this time, um, or is concerned about their ability to continue saving in this environment. Yes, uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Uh, I've mentioned a few times, uh, but it can't be said enough. I tell people when they're first getting started and throughout us working together in a financial planning relationship, this is a journey of small steps that add up to big things. So we talked about, again, those extreme or fad diets that are out there. Trying to do too much all at once can be overwhelming to us. In a lot of cases, we can um, not just backslide, but end up in a worse position because our habit is to overcorrect back to the things that we're comfortable. So the diets that work best uh, have a process of cutting things gradually over time, allowing you every once in a while to indulge, um, and in the case of like a financial construct, that would be being able to enjoy life now rather than focusing strictly on the future. Um, but gradually just deconstructing the bad habits, replacing them with good, healthy habits. And if you take those steps, break it into manageable and digestible pieces that are designed not to overwhelm you, strive for continuous improvement, it can add up to big results. So to answer your question there, uh, for people that are kind of apprehensive or concerned about what to do with their savings right now. Um, turn again to 
what can you control? If you haven't saved enough, if you're not sure you can do something, reframe that situation in a more positive light of what can I do right now? Uh, if you aren't saving, start with something small, gradually increase it as you adjust to that change. And eventually it can build up from a small percentage to a large percentage just by doing it that way. Uh, if you're afraid you need to discontinue your saving, you have other things, consider possibly trying to cut the savings rate partially rather than fully. In a lot of cases, even just seeing something go into a savings account, even if it's not what it was before, can have a good psychological impact on people that they're still addressing that. And lastly, if you're in a particularly difficult situation where you have to cut all saving right now, again, reframe it as this is a pause rather than a permanent change. Life happens, things get in the way, you have those priorities that need to be addressed now, but focus on taking care of them and just know that eventually you can get back to those good savings habits as things get clearer with your life. And again, don't be afraid to ask for help. We encourage people when they're uh, sick physically or mentally to seek the assistance of those healthcare workers. Uh, you should do the same from a certified financial planner. If you have financial issues that are nagging at you, they can help with a lot of the things we've talked about. If nothing else, provide you encouragement you need. But all in all, regardless of your situation and savings uh, rate right now, just stay positive, know things can get better, and ultimately the things you can control are the most important. Yeah, that sounds really great. Thank, thank you so much for these practical advisings on um, getting a will together, um, talking about estate planning, about how to play with the percentages and the numbers of um, your savings, your checkings, and how people are going to benefit from pivoting their financial behaviors in this time, um, that it is a response to the environment that is done out of our own place of control. Um, and speaking into a little bit of the mental shifting that has to occur for these behaviors to even take place. Um, I feel like you've brought a lot of value to this conversation of how it can help people mentally, emotionally, and even in some cases physically, because finances have a lot to do with our physical well-being um, and sharing from your personal ex a, a professional expertise of having worked with people and seeing some patterns along the way. And um, lastly, thank you so much for making um, the conversation so manageable with doable steps and um, reminding everyone, reminding us that help is available. So absolutely. yeah, thank you. Um, so with that, um, I just want to say thank you for those who are listening in. Um, please share this with others that you feel would benefit and take your beginning steps of uh, towards financial wellness in these times of duress and challenge in our community. So until next time, connect with me here and um, I will continue to try to get you practical, free information to help you self-care in these times. Thank you. Thanks, Elise. Bye. Thanks, everyone.